Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the channel. And a couple days ago, I built this thing, which is a replica of an 80s cartoon vehicle from He-Man called the Attack Track. And uh, on that video, I got this comment, which says, if you are going in the tank direction, try making the predecessor of the tank, the Boyralt machine. Now, uh, if this is the first time you've ever seen the word Boyralt, then me and you have something in common. So I figured I would look it up and see if this is something that I might want to try to replicate in Scrap Mechanic 2. So let's go on this journey together. All right, YouTube, do your thing. Okay, so we got a lot of interesting images here, some tank style stuff, but uh, let's go ahead and click on the top result here. All right, so this is what we're looking at here. And uh, if you ask me, this is literally a tank tread. The whole vehicle <laughs> is a tank tread. <laughs> is this, <laughs> this thing looks insane. Um, so I actually think this is pretty possible in Scrap Mechanic, especially when you look at this position right here, everything's at 90 degrees. So it looks like we just, we just build two uh, panels with a joint on the top and the bottom, and then we attach them on the sides, and then we just gotta build this machine in the middle that rolls through them all. So apparently this thing was meant to be able to go over things like barbed wire and uh, ditches and stuff on the battlefield, as you can see it doing right here. And here, I think they have a clip of it uh, trying to go over a ditch. Now watch this, this is actually kind of hilarious. You ready for this? Watch carefully. Did you see it? Did you see it? They, it didn't happen, it wasn't good. <laughs> it. <laughs> It bottomed itself out. Watch closely. Watch closely. Look at the edit. Watch over here. They cut and they actually had to, they had to back it up and insert stuff under it. They essentially had to manually level this gap so that it can make it over. And the problem, if you look closely, watch this track right here. Watch it roll over. This, this gets uh, a negative angle here which actually causes it to literally bottom itself out on its own track right there. He stops and they're like, uh-oh. They're like, wait, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> okay, roll. <laughs> Look, it's amazing. It goes over ditches. This is not, this is not a good vehicle. There's one more thing I wanted to point out with this that I noticed. Uh, look, you see these, um, these braces right here? Watch as it comes down. These actually are stopping these segments from closing at a steeper angle than whatever this is right here. And it looks like it looks like it's almost 45 degrees. So that's probably going to be a useful thing to notice as I build my design, too. OK, let's learn a little bit more about this thing. So what's cool about this is apparently this was essentially an ancestor of the tank, according to Wikipedia here. Designed in 1914, built in 1915. Man, they were fast. So I love this right here. Ultimately, the machine was deemed impractical, <laughs> so they gave up. It sounds like a perfect candidate for my channel. I love building impractical things that are kind of unique and cool. So as I was looking at this, I was wondering, how do they turn? You don't get tank steering unless you have two tank treads. They they each have to go in opposite directions. This is a single tank tread. The whole thing is one single tank tread. You can't turn this. That's why I went to this page because I was trying to look up like there must be something about its mechanism for turning. However, if you look right here, this device proved too fragile and slow, however, as well as being incapable of changing direction easily. <laughs> the project was officially abandoned the same year that it was built. So, oh, this is actually pretty funny too. The inventor insisted that modifications were made and a new commission was formed. So they rebuilt it again, trying to improve it. And then a second test showed that it was still extremely difficult to change direction. <laughs> I don't know why I am enjoying the failures of the past so much. It's like, I, j I feel like I can just feel their pain. Like I've been through what they've been through, but they had to put so much more effort to find out it was a bad idea. I just spend a couple hours in Scrap Mechanic and realize, nah, this isn't gonna work. But they had to put so much resources to try this out. Did they not try a scale version? Did this, somebody not build a miniature first? Did they, is it, was that not a strategy back then? Okay, oh, I'm curious about this. A second Boyralt machine. I haven't read this part yet. A new model was developed that was co more compact and lighter. Speed, however, 
was extremely low at one kilometer an hour. <laughs> wow, that is so bad. Oh no, <laughs> oh no, here we go again. The general commented on the sheer strength of the machine, but its poor ability to properly steer itself. Well, at least I know that if I can't turn, I'm being historically accurate. The steering is imprecise. Uh, is there steering though? I'm, I'm really curious what they tried for steering. While it's capable of flattening everything in its path, it cannot be affirmed that it will be able to meet with certainty any given enemy organization of limited dimensions that may be assigned to it, such as a bunker, machine gun housing, observatory. <laughs> They're just basically listing any possible enemy that this thing could encounter and being like, nope, this thing ain't gonna make it. All right, now that we've spent enough time making fun of some poor inventor's terrible idea, um, let's build our own. All right, I'm building it out of wood because I want it to be a light material because it looks like the all of this track has to be moved by the vehicle underneath it. All right, so these are the dimensions of one segment, and I think I'm going to need a track that goes... Because it's going to have to stay on track. It is a track. It is also going to have to stay on track within the track. So we're going to need a track within this track. That way we don't lose track of what we're doing. This might be logistically more difficult than I was expecting it to be. But I'm going to hope for the best here. So this is the track that the machine is going to try to stay on. I'm also going to have to create... I need to create a hinge for this. All right, so I got a hinge on the front and the back. And I'm hoping that this is going to be good enough. They'll just be able to weld into each other. And uh, hopefully no collisions that are unnecessary. So now what do I do about this? Uh, this angular... Well, actually, this... I think this could work right here. Do you think this will make it stop at a 45-degree angle? Maybe just like that, actually. Okay, as far as I can tell, I think this should work. This should function as a base track piece that I can then just weld onto each other. All right, here it is. So I'm just gonna... Let's just go ahead and weld this thing. I haven't even tested. <laughs> I probably should build, like the vehicle that is inside the track first and see if it can roll along this. But honestly, it's so easy to just weld these things together that I I'm, ju I'm just gonna do that. All right, so now in order to get this 90 degrees, I'm actually going to have to change this section so that this is up 90 degrees. And then this one can get welded right there. Perfect. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm stupid. If there's two 45 degree angles, this needs to be... Okay, good thing I just saw this. Because, yeah, this is going to keep it at 90 degrees. It's not going to be able to go past 90 degrees. So I need to change the original design, actually, before I go further. Yep, that would... I, I could have... I should have mathed that out. All right, so if I swap these out for the steeper wedges... Yeah, let's see how this one feels as far as the angle goes. Okay, go on in, go on down. Oh, oh, okay, so now this also needs... Okay, all right, we're getting there, we're getting there. That looks like a good angle. Okay, I'm cool with that. I am cool with this now. This is the design. All right, so then we weld this one right here. I should probably put this on a lift now. There we go. Oh man, this is taking shape. Look at this. Oh, this is going to be so cool. All right. I think we have the track. What happens if I let it off a lift now? <laughs> and that is why we're going to have a vehicle in the middle that is going to support the top part there. So now this vehicle, this part of the vehicle, I think needs to be heavy. This thing needs to really push down on these tracks. So I'm going to build this, at least the bottom of it, out of mostly concrete. All right. So we got that. It's going to go over into a wheel on this side. Now, I was kind of debating having this go on. I don't know if that's necessary. I might just be able to have it stay within these tracks here. So from what I can see in the design, um, the bottom part of it is almost the size of one of these track segments. So I'm going to be it's smaller, a little bit smaller than one of the track segments. So I'm just going to build it out to about here. This is definitely going to be a electric engine powered. We're going to need that torque and we're going to go pretty slow. Then we're going to see how fast. I hope I remember. We're going to try to see how fast we can turn up these engines. They could go one kilometer an hour. We're going to go faster than in one kilometer an hour. Okay. 
All right, now I gotta start building all the way up to the top. Wait, this is not, no, that is not nearly. Okay, I'm, I can't just do it with a solid angle like that. It, it has to be way shallower of an angle than what these are gonna allow me to provide. So I think I gotta build it with blocks first. Once I've mapped how far up this is going, this is so disorienting because everything's the same color. And I put the wheel right there. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna have the wheel in the center on the top because that wheel actually, I think is what moves the top over it now they're using gears like cog teeth which as you if you've seen the previous videos it is not a fun or easy thing to try to implement in scrap mechanic trying to have a cog tooth system so i'm gonna hope that this can work without that i feel like it could so please please work without it please strange vehicle you know what this uh this right here is good enough for a prototype all i gotta do is hook these wheels up and i think we can test it to see if this is even a working system right here so let's do that we are off the lift a weird thing is happening but we're good no we should be good okay let's move forward wait why is that like that okay we're moving forward it is oh wait a wait 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 what these wheels need to be going the other way. I don't, for some reason, I, my brain naturally made them go. Oh, that made a huge difference. That made a huge difference. <gasps> Wait, no, 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 this isn't right yet. This is not working quite the way it's supposed to work. No, <laughs> I think I messed that up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get back. Oh, let me move these wheels back. All of this, I didn't realize how much of this, like everything is interacting with each other. So yeah, I need to go back to the starting position here. Maybe, I don't know. All right, now let's reverse these wheels because it needs to push the track over itself as it's moving. Whoa, what is going on there? All right, hold on. We need to find the equilibrium. There we go. <gasps> oh, I still have a toilet seat on this. Hold on, don't get out of there. <laughs> I use that to climb up. It works. It actually works. But my hinges aren't good. I don't like my hinges. Let me try something here with the hinges. I'm gonna try to make a modification. All right, brand new track design. So now the idea is to weld these pipes on, oh, I've gotta do this one, onto these pipes and that. Oh, let's hit it over. Oh, that's perfect. The angle doesn't go quite as far as I was expecting, actually. I could have it go more simply by moving these back a couple of blocks. There we go. So now, I mean, I guess one block forward might be a little bit better, but that does look better. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna move it one block forward. That looks better. That does look better. All right, I'm going with this. This is the new track design. All right, there we go. Now let's see if this feels any better. Okay, here we go. Ooh, interesting. Oh, I still have the bearing on the wheel. That's fine though. It doesn't, oh wait, what's going on? It's working. The transition between the tracks, the gap is a little bit big. You know, I might be able to adjust that actually. All right, so I'm gonna experiment just by adding a pipe piece right here instead of this wedge block because the wheel seems to be going down into the wedge. I'm hoping that that pipe piece will make the wheel more likely to just go straight over. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Yeah, it goes straight over rather than here. You can see it gets stuck in, uh, in the rut a little bit. So this just gives it a little bit of a bridge to connect to the next track section. So I'm just gonna do that throughout. All right, I think we have it in a pretty good working state is at this point. So let's just build out the rest of this uh, this thing. There is one issue that I'm finding, unfortunately, but um, I'll talk about that after I build this out a little bit more, see if it changes anything with adding more weight to this. Okay, I think this thing is finally ready to go. Um, so let's see how this thing functions. We're definitely gonna put it to the test. We're gonna go over tank uh, the train tracks. We're gonna, I don't know, try to find a, a ditch or something that I don't know, put some obstacles in its way. I mean, I guess that was its strength, right? And oh, I think I set the engines a little bit slower, but that's fine. More more accurate to the original historical failure was extremely slow, one kilometer an hour. It's kind of funny, in the original video, you just see people just casually walking next to it, like walking ahead of it to see how it's doing. 
Just showing how slow this thing really is. And you know that thing's chugging along at full power, too. So, look at this. This is totally working exactly as intended. Really smooth. So, one of the issues I was seeing with this is, like, the top... The top part doesn't always maintain contact with that wheel. Which means sometimes that the bottom wheels actually start getting further and further ahead of this cycle. So you can see right now, watch when the front part gets flat. Look at where we are in relation. It goes flat right when we're right at the edge of the previous track segment. But as we go further and further and further, we keep moving closer and closer to the front segment. Um... At least at faster speeds. At this speed, it actually seems to be working pretty consistently. So the reason why I have two engines on here right now is I actually have independent control over the top wheel speed and the bottom wheel speed. So if that became an issue, I was thinking about speeding up the top wheels. So that way the top of the track could keep catching up if we ended up getting ahead of it. Uh, that was the idea at least. But right now, this doesn't seem to be having any issues. It seems to be working great actually. You know what I'm curious about? We're going so slow. Let, let's speed it up a little bit. I'm going to speed it up by one. Let's see how this feels. Electric engine notches, they uh, they speed up a lot. Per no oh, see, now we're getting some hiccups where the top... Yep, see, now we're getting to the front... Uh, we're getting to the front track segment before it's all the way flat. Yep, that's what I was worried about right there. And then this gets worse and worse over time. So, I want to see what happens now if I speed up this a little bit ahead of this one. Is that going to help us? Whoa! Ooh, ooh, that was a little awkward. But now you can see that it's definitely going down before we get to it. It just has that weird... the uh, bloop. Like, the bloop. That little bloop in the middle. <laughs> but we're getting to the... We're getting to the train tracks. Let's see how this thing handles train tracks. Our first section of uneven... Uh, terrain. And you know what? Let's go back to the stable speed. Put these down. Okay, so this should be the more stable speed. Now let's see how it handles its first real test here. Its main strength is supposed to be able to get over obstacles like this. And so far, so far it's looking good. Oh, that's a little weird. It's like sliding against it, but we're getting over it. Look at this. Friction's a little strange on this one. But... Are we going to have a success here? Are we going to have the issue that they had with the bottoming out? Oh, no. It kind of leaned down. I'm really curious if we'll have that issue with bottoming out if we create, like, if we have some type of ditch. Uh, yeah. This thing doesn't turn very well. <laughs> it's just no turning programmed in this thing at all. But <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, they still never explained how they even attempted to make it turn. They just say it didn't work well implying that they had something to make it turn, and I, I couldn't find anything that has a description of how it turned. So now, how's it gonna handle this? This is really steep. This is like really, really steep. I have no idea if it can do this at all. I'm not expecting it. I don't think, are we just gonna keep sliding down? Is that what's gonna happen? Should I have used a higher friction block? But higher friction blocks are really heavy. I mean, we're still going. We're definitely still going. Oh, it's not gonna... We're not gonna be able to pull it up anymore. The friction on the wheels isn't gonna be high enough. Oh, and... <laughs> I wonder if that ever happened to them. All right, clearly that was way, way too steep. But I'm curious, actually, can I... Can I spawn this inside of this? No way! Look at that. I can set this thing back up without having to uh, disassemble it and respawn it on a lift. All right, let's try to find a better obstacle. I want to find a ditch for this thing to go over, just like in the video, and see if ours is better and doesn't get stuck. Okay, here we go. I think this is a really good test of it. Let's put it down this thing and see if, uh, see if it's successful. All right, here goes nothing. You can do it. And then after this, I'm going to do the high speed test, which uh, I, I just am pretty sure it's not going to go well, but we'll see what happens. All right, so here's the part right here. This is going to go down further than the one that we're on now, and that causes them to bottom out. <laughs> this is so historically accurate that we just literally ran into the same exact issue that they did. I can't go anymore because I've bottomed myself out. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cut. Cut, 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 cut. We do, we're, hold on. Just, just don't include this in the video, okay? Just put that there like that. 
Okay, roll it. Look at that. No issue. It can go perfectly, perfectly down this thing just like that. No issues at all. <laughs> <laughs> It's working <laughs> after that little hiccup. <laughs> oh, man, this is so funny. I just, it, I, I just think it's so hilarious that we ran into exactly the issue I was making fun of. But I mean, we should have expected to, right? If this thing's really that, uh, that similar to the original design, that's exactly what we should have expected to happen. But look at this now. This thing's going across this stuff with relative ease. We just went all over all of that. It's just if it, if the landing track is at any bit of an angle lower than the track you're coming off of, you're gonna have a bad time. You're gonna bottom out. Um, but I think now let's just see what happens when I put this thing up to full power. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> yeah, I could have guessed as much. I mean, there's a reason why they chose to have it go one kilometer an hour. All right, but let's try this experiment. Can it go back up? Going down with gravity is uh, definitely the easier way, but can this accomplish the same thing, but going up instead? Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is weird. What's happening to the... The top is not really going along as much as it should. There we go. Uh-oh. We're, we're sliding the... This thing, uh, there's a there's a friction difference in scrap mechanic between scrap mechanic and real life. Scrap mechanic has a lot less friction on angles like that. Especially considering how heavy we are. All right, we've we've turned a little. Oh no, we just got detracked. We got derailed. Okay, well that was a failure. Going up is not as easy as going down, apparently. All right, well we know what the optimal speed is. This is definitely the most stable speed. But what is the fastest we can go that isn't an instant failure? Let's just keep ramping it up a little bit. I'm going up by two notches this time. This is a speed that I haven't done before. This is not bad. We're definitely faster than a kilometer an hour, that's for sure. All right, we are catching up now. We are getting ahead of it. So I will now, I think now is the time to keep the top going slightly faster so it can keep ahead of us on the bottom. Yeah, see, that works so much better when the top wheels are just one notch faster. All right, this is so stable. I'm actually surprised at how stable this is right now. Okay. Now let's try it. Uh, let's go up another notch. So every single notch, I think the speed actually doubles with electric engines. Whoa! Whoa, okay, this is too much. This is clearly too much. I don't think we're recovering from this one. So it does seem like I think this right here is the fastest we can make this thing go. Yeah, this is not bad at all right here. This is our top speed. I don't know what the speed it really is, but I'm pretty sure we did better than the historical one. Hey, what's first person look like? So this is what it was like from the perspective of a 1915 inventor <laughs> trying to make his own creation work. Here, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a more interesting obstacle here. Let's see if, let's see what happens when we do this. I'm just gonna put that in front of me. Something a little bit different than the natural terrain is gonna give me. We're gonna bottom out here. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Okay, powerful. What about going, let's go back. Let's go backwards over it. Uh-oh. Nope, nope, that's not working. Yeah, see, this is where if we had the gear system with the gear teeth at the top and the bottom, uh, we wouldn't have that issue because the top track would keep going no matter what. And yeah, right now the top track has gotten, because of that incline, we don't have nearly enough friction up there to keep it rolling as we go. So, yep, that's one benefit to having the um, the gear teeth. All right, but all things considered, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. It feels very comparable in performance to what I've seen and read from the original Boyeralt design. So keep those suggestions coming. Oh, we got derailed again. Keep those suggestions coming. If you guys have any other crazy mechanisms, toys, vehicles, whatever, um, I've been reading the comments and I've been finding, I've been learning about all kinds of crazy vehicles that I never knew existed. I've been enjoying recreating all these things and seeing how they perform in scrap mechanics. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some other videos that you can find on the channel right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.